Keast has learned that a senior housing officer who was dismissed in a Homes for Staff scandal has had the case settled before it reached an employment tribunal. Christine Reeves was dismissed for gross misconduct after she'd moved into a sheltered home in Norwich with her partner. The elderly residents had been evicted, ready for the buildings to be demolished. This report from Debbie Tubby. It's unclear how much of Norwich City taxpayers' money has been paid to Christine Reeves, the senior Norwich City housing officer dismissed from her £50,000 a year post. I felt a full independent investigation was essential to get to the bottom of what actually happened here, of who knew what, of when decisions were made and why they were taken. There were so many questions that remain unanswered and now today taxpayers will have to fund this settlement as well, so it's very disappointing. Norwich was in the national headlines over this, the Greyhound opening housing complex. It all started when the elderly residents were evicted to build new affordable homes. Then 18 council staff, including Christine Reeves and her partner, moved in, living here for just £47 a week. Christine Reeves felt she was unfairly dismissed following the saga here. Her employment tribunal was due to start yesterday, but it's understood an out-of-court settlement has been reached. She's still out of work and has described the whole episode as traumatic. In a statement, Norwich City Council says it's unable to comment on this matter. As for Greyhound opening, it's due to be demolished by April. Building work should start in the autumn. Debbie Tubby, BBC Look East, Norfolk. The scientist at the centre of the storm over leaked emails and claims the University of East Anglia manipulated climate data has broken his silence. Professor Phil Jones has said his research stands up to scrutiny and that one of his studies, which has been questioned by sceptics, has been corroborated. A Polish woman has gone missing soon after giving birth at the Norfolk and Norwich Hospital. Agnieszka Marciniak had given birth to a girl and left the hospital saying she would come back when she'd collected personal belongings. Police said they're extremely concerned for her welfare. Homes had to be evacuated today after a fire near Haverhill. It broke out in a barn at Hundon filled with paper hand towels and cleaning products. A number of gas cylinders were also on the site, which led firefighters to set up a 200-metre exclusion zone. A plan to create two new villages in Essex went on public display today. If it goes ahead, the consortium behind the plan, which would mean more than 10,000 new homes, says it would also pay for part of a busy road to be turned into a dual carriageway. Exhibitions of housing plans don't often attract a crowd, but the size of the turnout reflected the scale of these proposals. It is a big plan and it doesn't take into account all the problems that additional housing in the area um, will suffer. This is the plan. A consortium of local landowners wants to build two new villages, one near Braintree and another at Mark's Tay near Colchester. This is the A120 between Colchester and Braintree. And if the consortium gets the go-ahead for the houses, it's offering to turn stretches of this notorious road into a dual carriageway. And that could be a tempting carrot for the planners because a government scheme to upgrade the road, recently named as one of the most dangerous in the country, was dropped last year because of a lack of money. Thousands of new homes will need to be built in Essex in the years to come. The consortium believes rather than scattering them in ones or twos across the countryside, it will be better to build some of them close together in the two new villages. And it would promote jobs, it would promote community spirit and feeling um, because of the way we're going to design the projects and it would help to alleviate the infrastructure problems that we have at the moment. But many people, like the chairman of Mark's Tay Parish Council, will take some convincing. The first word that springs to mind is ambitious. Very ambitious. It's a very, very large development. And the plans will be on display again at St Paul's Church in Braintree on Thursday and Mark's Tay Village Hall on Saturday. Gareth George, BBC Look East. 24 hours after Peterborough United sacked Mark Cooper, they've unveiled a new manager today. He is 41-year-old Jim Gannon, the former Stockport and Motherwell boss. Gannon will hope to bring stability to a club dogged by problems behind the scenes. It's been a very difficult six months at the club. Um, it's not nice to see managers come and go and a team not perform as well as they can. So my job is just to come in, perhaps bring a little bit of stability and 
try to bring more out of the players and just, just help re-energise them, reorganise them and, and hopefully that'll be the trick to get some results and that'll bring the confidence. Still with football, David Prutton is back in the Colchester United squad for the home game against Carlisle tonight. He scored this great goal on his debut against MK Dons a week ago but wasn't eligible to play against Leeds United at the weekend. A plan to demolish most of the crumbling harbour wall in Southwold is being described as scandalous, but the District Council says it doesn't have the money to rebuild it. It stood for 102 years, but Southwold's harbour wall is collapsing. For the past four years, it's been fenced off, and with good reason. The speed of deterioration of the seawall is dramatic. The ground level here must have fallen by at least a foot and a half. The sea is sucking the material out from underneath. Harbour users say they were led to believe the entire wall would be repaired with metal piling, but now it seems that's not going to happen. The wall by the lifeboat station will be reinforced, but the rest could be taken down. I think it is scandalous because we have frankly been misled. There are opportunities here for servicing vessels that are servicing the wind farms, crew changes and that sort of thing, bringing in spares. All of this would bring income into the harbour. Waveney District Council says it doesn't have the £4 million needed to repair the entire wall. Instead, it's proposing to turn most of it into a rocky slope for half the price. Looking at the wall now is overdue maintenance, and that's exactly what we're doing. We're dealing with a problem. Well, you're not maintaining it, you're knocking it down. Uh, <laughs> most well, of it. We, we, are, we are repairing the wall. And, and, th and taking down 85% of it. We will be. We'll be putting an option in. That, that puts it right. The council insists it's the most viable option. Harbour users say taking a valuable economic asset out of use is an outrage. A final decision will be made in the spring. Richard Daniel, BBC Look East, Southwold. You're watching Look East from the BBC. Coming up, now the latest in our series, charting the history of the world through man-made objects. The BBC is working with museums across the region and looking for your help to compile a list of items